Hello, welcome to Film Fireside. My name is Bryson. The Hunt was directed by Craig Zobel and written by Nick Hughes. Nick Hughes, who is the listed as the main screenwriter for this movie, deserves a lot of credit because I just think the script is very interesting. It's very intriguing. I think it's intriguing in its way of bringing up political and social commentary in the way it does. I, we live in a polarized world today. It seems like ego can only be one end or the other. And there's danger in extremism. For example, the extremism of kidnapping a group of people who have different beliefs than you do and hunting them for sport is really extreme. On the other hand, accusing people of doing such a thing like that because that's what those types of people do, also extreme. Things that aren't spoilers of this movie that I really, really enjoy Betty Gilpin's performance in this film, wowza. It is just so good. Um, I've only seen like a couple episodes of Glow. Uh, so I, actually I've only seen like the first two episodes of Glow. I didn't really, I, I have a hard time committing to TV shows. I'm scared of commitment with TV shows. I'm afraid of commitment. I think I was more excited for the concept of this film uh, that the trailer presented than I was, like, the actual quality of the movie. And one of the ways the quality totally exceeded my expectations is Betty Gilpin's performance. Holy cow. Another way this film exceeded my expectations was just, it was just very entertaining. It was really entertaining. It was fast-paced. Um, it's a very short film. It's not that long. It's barely an hour and a half, and I'm all for a movie that's only an hour and a half long. So the fact that this film accomplished all that it did within that short time frame was really, really awesome. I love watching a movie that I feel like I can watch again and I can analyze. You know, I, I watched this film and at the end I thought to myself that I'm not, I, I didn't catch everything that this movie was trying to teach or trying to show me. I gotta watch it again. Will I? Maybe. I actually, I probably will. Honestly, I probably will because we're all stuck in our houses for the next little bit. So, I'll be watching it again, probably. Anyway, analyzing a film is something I love doing. I don't have time to put it into every film I watch. So I really look for and value when a film is smart. If a film is smart, I know that there's things for me to analyze. And this film felt smart to me. Therefore, there's things to analyze. There's things to learn. Uh, yeah, so I really like that about this film. One of the things, I guess... I would say I didn't like about this film, and this may kind of contradict my last statement, is this film was a little too wrapped up in its concept sometime, and there are, like, plot things that happen. I, I don't call them plot holes, but I think they're just, like, throwaway times where it's like, okay, we're not going to really care about this, because that really doesn't have anything to do with our concept, so we don't, we're just going to let that go away. You know what I mean? One thing to remember about this film is it is a political satire. And this type of political satire means none of our political views are safe. And it is satire in a kind of brutal way for our society. I think, I already, I, I've read some reviews. I try not to read too many reviews, because, well, especially before I talk about it and get my all my thoughts out, because uh, I don't want anyone to taint me. But even just from the few reviews I read on Letterboxd, there are are people who are like, oh yeah, this film is all about those idiotic conservatives, or boy, those liberals sure are dumb. It's great that we finally have a film that's showing the conservative side of things. And I, to those people, I'm already like, wow, we are, we are literally missing the point. All right, I think I'm going to get into spoilers now. I think I've gotten all my non-spoiler thoughts out. So let's talk the concept. A group of liberal elites, as they're referred to, uh, kidnaps a bunch of conservatives and places them in this uh, in the middle of the woods and begins hunting them for sport. The reason they do this is Hillary Swank's character has a text thread amongst other employees of her company that she's the CEO of and they mention how they were excited to go to the manor this week and hunt some deplorables. Uh, they meant it jokingly. That text got leaked and a bunch of conservative people started posting about it on social media and spreading this rumor that 
these people who are very liberal are just the worst types of people, and they're actually hunting people for sport. I can hear Rush Limbaugh <laughs> shouting, shouting this from the rooftops. We're dead. It's just a matter of time, and then the Democrats win the White House. And so they decide, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get some liberals, we're gonna get some conservatives, and we are gonna hunt them for sport. I don't think this film in any way tries to say which of these people are right and wrong. I don't think this film ever does that. I mean, obviously, those hunting the kidnap for sport are the antagonists of the film, <laughs> and they're creepy and, and crazy characters. As far as their belief system, the belief system of the hunters and the belief system of the hunted, there's never a, oh, well, we as the film side with these two. The film stays very neutral, and the way they portray that is through Betty Gilpin's character. I, not once does she give her opinion on any anything that's said. Any of the very like baseline <laughs> conservative thoughts or liberal thoughts sent her way. She doesn't comment. She doesn't respond. Her being able to be just this kick-ass woman in this type of environment and just no one... She doesn't really take sides with them, she only uses the people that help her get to safe places. And anyone who gets in her way, she, she takes out. But again, not expressing a political opinion or a political, social way of thinking. Just her. Just her honest thoughts. That to me suggests this film is trying to warn, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, this film is trying to warn about extremism. So you, your extreme views in politics, are you just going to not let go and not even try to work with anyone who believes maybe a little differently than you? Granted, there are some polarizing people on the opposite end of your belief scale, but you don't have to work with the polarizing people. There are people who aren't that extreme, and I, I believe there are plenty of people like Betty Gilpin's character in the world today. If anything, I think... I kind of felt represented by Betty Kilpin's character. I, I hate getting, uh, I hate listening to both of those sides just at each other. It's just so annoying. And I feel like a lot of people are that way. There's a lot of people on social media who really are annoyed by the amount of just crap that just gets thrown at each other. Betty Gilpin's interactions too, um, after all said and done, uh, her interactions with the stewardess, I think is really interesting and really telling to the fact that she's an inclusive person. I, I love how she then includes the stewardess, where uh, the guy at the beat on the plane at first um, excluded. And we see a lot of that going through. We There's a lot of polarizing between people. Even while the hunt is happening, um, a lot of people trying to polarize even the those being hunted from Betty Gilpin because she's not conservative enough. She's not following along with their beliefs. Like that one dude who was convinced that there are immigrants who are... I can't remember the phrase. I hadn't even heard of it until I watched this movie. That they're just like actors pretending <laughs> to be immigrants so they can manipulate stories or whatever. Um, he gets kind of polarized towards her for not going along. Uh, to see here, though, sit down with someone who isn't trying to attack her and just welcome her in. Um, I love that. I love the ending. Um, I think that just brings the message home, is you, me, we're all on the same team, okay? We may see the world differently. Our circumstances, our upbringings cause different types of beliefs, but they're not always wrong. And if we actually listen to each other instead of attack and polarize, we can maybe grow a little more as a country and as a society. And personally, we may learn a little more about the world outside of our own little bubble. I think that's a message that's really important today. Made me really enjoy this film. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, the execution of certain things was lacking due to the fact that they were just so wrapped up in this concept, which is really, really good. I really support it. So those lack of execution things are, are pretty forgivable. I'm going to give The Hunt an 8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me your thoughts about The Hunt below. One of the things I'd love to hear from you, there are references to the book Animal Farm. 
I never read that book. So I, I have a feeling there's a bit of a message within that as well. Curious what, if you had read Animal Farm or remember Animal Farm or know more of the plot of Animal Farm, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what it's trying to suggest and why the references to Animal Farm or how the references to Animal Farm play a part in this movie. Very specific question I'd love for you to comment on. Also, comment your thoughts on the movie. Did you like it? Pretty violent, pretty crazy. <laughs> so maybe you liked that or you hated it. I don't know, let me know. Comment, like, subscribe. Bye-bye.